task at hand right now is to get a new season started. It's been well over a year, and we think and hope the wait is going to be worth it. Linus Lundquist, David Malukas, teammates lining up on the front row. Kirkwood, Peterson, row number two. On the main straightaway, more than a year away, Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires is back. 2021 is green from Barber Motorsports Park. Lundquist gets the early jump. Contact. And well off, we got one into the barrier. That, that started with looked like uh, Kyle Cook were trying to get a little too hot into turn one, got into the outside of David Malukas. The front wing is damaged here on Kyle Kirkwood as they head to turn five. Malukas hard into the barrier and damage for Kirkwood as well. Two of the major championship contenders right off the bat, and that's allowed Lundquist to scoot away. They'll bring him back in. Full course caution, no way to avoid that. And heartbreak for David Malukas, who came into this race and this season with so much confidence, as he should have, as one of the few veterans coming back from two years ago. Great off-season testing and no real estate. I want to see what happened again, and we're going to ride with Kyle Kirkwood. Just up to his right is Malukas. He, he tried to back out, so he, he saw the opportunity, the opening on the inside. As Kyle heads in at the start, he tries to back out. You see him lock that inside yeah. front, just can't get it woed down. Hit the outside front of his wing, hits David Malukas' left rear, puts Malukas in the barrier, and breaks Kyle Kirkwood's wing there. Ah, oh, that's an unfortunate start for those two guys, both of them showing really good pace through practice and qualifying. Now we're ready for the restart, and two teammates up front with Lundquist, Peterson, Sowry, and Devlin DeFrancesco from Andretti restarting in fourth, back to green on the main straightaway, starting lap number five at Barber Motorsports Park. A couple of drivers poking their nose out to see if there is the opportunity to make a pass into turn one. Everyone thinking better of it, slotting back in, trying to get the setup exit of turn two here for that big break zone, which is very inviting to throw the car up the inside to make a pass into turn five. And Sowry takes a look into that passing zone in five, not there. That's Di Francesco in that bright yellow number 17. Andretti Autosport with partnership with George Steinbrenner IV. He is one of the co-owners of that car as well. Katie. And Kevin, we're trying to get used to a lot of new names here in Indy Lights this year, but Toby Sauer, you see him there in the green and white car. Well, he's back with us for a second season in Indy Lights. This year, though, with Hunkos Racing, I had the opportunity to catch up with him earlier this season and asked him, you know, what you do during 2020? A lot of us didn't spend much time at a racetrack. Well, Kevin, he didn't spend any time at a racetrack. In fact, he's the only driver in this year's field that didn't race at all throughout 2020. So, Charlie, maybe you can talk about how does that affect a driver hopping back in the race car for the first time since 2019? Well, it feels great, Katie, getting back in a car, especially something you love so much as racing, getting back in the cockpit. It feels like coming home, but it does take a little while to blow those cobwebs out. They had the opportunity to come test here, and I know that Toby really felt like that test was a good chance to knock some of the rust off and work towards getting faster, getting closer to the front, and he's showing well in this first race. He's trying to find his feet. They took some big swings at car setups and he was starting to get more comfortable. So even with a year away, he's definitely finding his feet quickly, running here in a podium spot. Linus Lundquist has checked out just a little bit. We talked about Kirkwood a few years ago who won uh, four championships over the span of three years. Linus Lundquist is kind of in that same category. He already has won three Junior Formula Championships Last year, he won 15 of 17 races for this same team, Global Racing Group and FR America. So I joked with him, hey, what went wrong? Well, we saw Kyle Kirkwood sneak that pass on Christian Bogle earlier in the race in the last corner of turn 17, but that is True. very rare. It be really the best passing place, the lowest risk, best opportunities turn five. Wait a minute, where did you pass Will Power that year? You finished fourth here at IndyCar. Uh, I passed him around the outside into turn 12, which is a sixth gear flat out corner. He was saving fuel and I was on overtake. So it whatever, wasn't, doesn't, it, it, it counts. He gave me room and that was the best part about it was it didn't end in tears for either of us or both of us. 
Charlie Kimball is joining us. He also finished second here in his Indy Lights race back in 2010. We're down to two laps to go in the season opener. Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires in the Indy Lights Grand Prix of Alabama here on Peacock, your exclusive home of Indy Lights and IndyCar practice coverage throughout 2021. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, NBC is the home for the IndyCar opener. And today, the Barber Motorsports Park has been the home for Linus Lundquist, up to over five seconds now is his lead. On the right side, you're seeing that battle back there for seventh, eighth, and ninth. Robert McGinnis has scooted away a little bit. White flag coming out for Lundquist, 2.3 miles to go. Now, while he's had a magnificent day, I would think Benjamin Peterson, the 21-year-old from Copenhagen, Denmark, who's lived in Seattle most of the time since he was four years old, Charlie, feels pretty good about his move back to the U.S. after a couple of years of British F3. Well, it's fantastic. They've That team, HND, HMD Motorsports and the Global Racing Group, they've showed up and they've really put their stamp on the first weekend here in Indy Lights. I think it's going to be a great season. You know, Linus Lundquist just has to finish out, stay clean, stay smooth, take care of the car, and bring it around to the checker. Linus Lundquist, along with that 1.6 liter championship, also won the British F3 title in 2018. So three championships for him. Long way to go, 20 race schedule, but starting it in style. Couple of more corners to go. That first win is so special, and for Linus as a rookie in his first Indy Lights race, he's batting a 1,000 here in Indy Lights. After a year away, Indy Lights is back, and Linus Lundquist starts 2021 off of the win. From pole to victory lane, Lundquist wins at Barber Motorsports Park. What a great day for a young driver to come away with that win. As Kyle Kirkwood tries to get any last points as he can right as they come to the checker. Not going to get it done. But what a great recovery from Kyle Kirkwood. To reset after that first lap contact, he'll learn from that. He'll be better as you see the two HMD Motorsport cars congratulating each other. Does this start to feel like 2020 as well with that domination last year? I, way too soon to, to tell. But firstly, a massive thank you to, to the whole team, Nathan, Sean, Caleb, everybody who's worked so hard over winter uh, to, to bring us such a good package. And I'm just happy that I kept the car on track and uh, managed to get the win. So just over the moon right now. And uh, very happy for the team to get a 1-2 in their first one as well. So uh, very good start. In race number two, Runkla starts on the outside of the front row. That's a look on board with Kyle Kirkwood. It's David Malukas crashed out in the opening corner yesterday. He is in that predominantly black car, the 79 that's going to lead the field. His teammate Lundquist in the orange and black pulls up on the outside. Andretti teammates McGinnis and DeFrancesco, who's in that bright yellow car on the outside of road number two. It's go time for Barber Motorsports Park. Race number two is green. Maluka sweeping around the outside, grabs the lead, and Lundquist will file into second. McGinnis gets third, the battle's for fourth. Toby Sowery trying to make the move around the outside, make set his up the position up for him to be able to close the pass into turn five. Gets it done as they head down to that heavy braking zone, Kevin. Sowery got the spot. De Francesco now working on Alex Peroni right around the outside. The Australian is going to get one spot, and now he's going to challenge Sowery, and they're going to drag race down towards turn number eight. That all started in the break zone of turn five. Alex Peroni had the preferred driving line threw the car in on the brakes as he locks up and slides wide, maybe giving the position back to Toby Sowery. Peroni dirt tracking, and it looks like, as we see up ahead from Kirkwood's vantage point, he will maintain that position. Great work by Peroni in his second Indy Lights race. He's really found his feet quickly here in the Indy Lights Championship, took advantage of only his second ever rolling start in a race car to be able to move up a few spots in that first lap. Sowery is the highest returner. And there's a lockup for McGinnis, giving Sowery a little bit of look. Coming back under, out of turn number five. Not there, but he's got maybe a run going into turn number eight. DeFrancesco was right there, too. That's three, four, five. Sowery trying to go around the outside. That's not the preferred spot. McGinnis is going to maintain the position. 
man. I thought there was going to be contact one way or another. I thought Sauri was making the pass, and then McGinnis locked up as we see Peroni drop a wheel in the back. It's getting really, really hot and heavy here in these last 10 laps or so. What I started to mention is that Sauri is the highest returner in the championship, third for a combination of teams, which included HMD at one point in, in 2019. And that included a win at Portland. He's trying to get on the podium here in opening weekend after just missing a chance yesterday. Look at it again, Charlie. Toby throws it in, and he knows it's late. Robert knows it's late, gets on the brake, gets to the apex, takes the air off Toby Sowery's nose. Toby tries to run that real low line, get the exit. Man, that was close. I, oof. The other thing Toby's got to be thinking now is if Robert McGinnis is pushing his tires that hard, having those big lockups, if I keep the pressure on him, don't put myself in a position to be overtaken by Devlin DeFrancesco. So you see a lot of these guys fighting lockups. Kyle Kirkwood may get a position here on Daniel Frost coming out of turn five. Kirkwood trying to run up the left, and they are just inches apart. These are teammates headed down to turn eight at, what, 160 miles per hour? It's pretty close to that. <laughs> Rule number one is usually don't hit your teammates. So Kyle definitely trying to give him any extra room. Daniel didn't give him a whole lot more than he needed there for sure. McGinnis has been able to maintain third. That's the final podium spot. Toby Sowery, green and white car behind him. The bright yellow car is Devlin DeFrancesco. Then Alex Peroni. Blue car with green and, and right now around the outside. McGinnis is going to lose two spots. Something's and DeFrancesco got around Sowery. So DeFrancesco goes from fifth to third. And there's a problem for McGinnis. And then DeFrancesco, I think, might have been out in the dirt there after clearing the ailing car of Robert McGinnis. Oh, he was in line for a podium and held off two or three really strong challenges. And with six laps to go, Robert McGinnis is dropping like a rock through the field. And in all of that melee, the car we're riding on here, Kyle Kirkwood, leapt himself all the way up to the top five in fifth. I mentioned that number to Kirkwood today. Hey, it's tough to pass starting seventh. You don't want to have contact. It's kind of a top five <laughs> realistic goal. He didn't really get into what that was, but that was my thought. And there he rides at the moment as McGinnis on. Was the left front down? That left front seems to be low, and hopefully it doesn't come apart and cause a bigger incident before he can get back to pit lane and replace it. Oh, what a shame for Robert McGinnis. Young man out of New York dropping back. There's a look at Christian Bogle, who has moved up to 11th. Katie, what do you know? Well, I can confirm that Robert McGinnis indeed does have a flat left front tire. I just checked in with his crew chief, Jessica Mace, to ask her what happened. She said she actually thinks it's from him flat spotting it so many times. And Charlie, we kind of saw that as he was going into the turns and kind of roasting up those brakes, right? Yeah, you can see as we get into turn two here, he gets on and the left front just disappears on him. The pressure goes away, the grip goes away, and it creates this cascading effect with cars behind him losing their momentum. Peroni gets a little stuck, isn't sure what's happening. Kyle Kirkwood pounces, but I feel bad for Robert McGinnis. Devlin DeFrancesco looks like he may come out with a pair of podiums in his opening weekend in Indy Lights. Toby Sowery may finish fourth for the second day in a row. Al Kirkwood feels a lot better than he did about 15 minutes ago, running in fifth after being admired in ninth for the entirety of the race. But it's all been David Malukas up front. Daniel Frost is going to have to pit. Another left front flat for that Andretti Autosport team. Back to the front, David Malukas, just a couple of more corners to negotiate. The 19-year-old from Chicago in his second Indy Lights season maybe takes a move towards the championship. First win in Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires for David Malukas. And Kevin, what a sweet moment it is from a crash in race one, not completing a single lap to a win in race two. David, how much sweeter is this moment now? Oh man, it feels amazing, uh, especially with uh, with the incident from yesterday. It just feels like a full turnaround, you know. Oh man, every lap I was pushing, pushing, and even on the last few laps, they're telling me the gap, and it seemed like it was secure. And I was like, felt like Captain America. I was like, man, I could do this all day. It felt amazing. Watch the Firestone Grand Prix of Saint Petersburg, Sunday, April 25th at noon on NBC.